We're going to look at how to read the periodic table with this video, and we're going to start by looking at one of the tiles that you might see on the periodic table. This one is for boron, and so you're going to see these numbers, and the top number is called the atomic number. The atomic number. And that tells you the number of protons that would be in that element. So that's going to be the number of protons, protons, or electrons. It also gives you electrons. The top number, atomic number. Then in the middle you just have the symbol. In this case it's capital letter B. And then the bottom you have the atomic mass. Atomic mass. And the atomic mass is made of protons plus neutrons. Proton, protons plus neutrons. And for that, to find the neutrons, what you can do is round this to a whole number, in this case up to 11. And then what you're going to do is subtract out the protons. So you take 11 minus 5. And by doing that, it gives you 6. And so that tells you the number of neutrons. You have 6 neutrons for this atom. If we take a look at the atom, here's a picture of the shells. And we'll look at the electron configuration, or what's called the Bohr diagram. And for this one, let's take a look at the Let's think about the nucleus. In a nucleus, that's where you're going to have the six neutrons and five protons. So in that nucleus, I'm going to have five protons. I'll put a plus here because they're positive. And then six neutrons. I'll put an N for that. So that's in the center in the nucleus. Surrounding that, you have a cloud of electrons spinning really fast. So fast that you can't really even see them. They'd be bl a blur. And so those electrons will be the same number as the protons, so we're going to have five of those spinning around. And as they spin, they're going to be in these different shells. Now there's some rules that you need to know about the shells. And the rules for the shells are the following. This is a, a basic set of rules that can help you figure out the Bohr diagram. So this first shell, starting on the inside, working our way out, um, I'll put the little chart here, shell number. Shell number one, and the maximum electrons, that's the symbol for electrons, maximum electrons it holds. So the first shell can only hold two electrons. Two electrons. The second shell will hold up to eight. Okay? Let me move this up so you can see it a little bit. Here we go. Okay, so first shell holds two, second shell holds eight. Now when you go to the third shell, it starts to get a little tricky because there's something called suborbitals that are involved, but what you're going to do is just remember the number eight because the elements want to feel like they have eight on their outer shell on the third shell. They do add other shells as they get larger and it gets a little more complicated than that but in a simplified version what you need to remember when filling out these Bohr diagrams is especially with the first 18 elements is remember 288. Eight. This one actually holds 18 but you want to remember this number eight. Eight's kind of the magic number it's called something called the octet rule, where the, the elements prefer to have this 8 on the outer shell of the third shell. And the fourth shell, and the fifth shell, and the sixth shell. But I'm not going to get into the suborbitals and, and that electron configuration with this. Okay, so moving on from that, let's take a look at how do you put the electrons, how do you put these elect following these rules, how do I put the electrons where they need to go? Okay. So, 
I'm going to take this away for a second. First, we got to remember that the electron number will be the same as electron number is going to be the same as proton number. So we have five electrons. I'm going to do them in a different color here. Just use green. So we have five elect five electrons spinning around. Only two can fit in this first shell. So I'm going to put them here for a shell. There's two. The rest, let's see, I have three more because I have five total. The rest are going to go on the second shell. The shell, another name for the shell, is also called an orbital or energy level. There's a couple different names. So it doesn't matter where you put them on the on the shell, on the circles, because in, in reality they're actually spinning really, really quickly. So I have a total, as you can see, of one, two, three, four, five. And now I'm done with that electron configuration. Let's try another one. As we look at the electrons this time, remember that in the, in the nucleus we have 17 protons. And to get the number of neutrons, we'd have to subtract out the protons from the mass. And if the protons are 17, we'd round this to a whole number, 35 minus 17. 35 minus 17, 18. So I have 18 neutrons in the nucleus there. So now to draw the electrons, remember those rules. First shell can only hold two. You're going to work your, your way from the inside shell outward. And we need 17 total electrons here. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I need seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? So there's my electron configuration. Now I have 17 green dots representing the negative electrons, and I have 17 protons in the nucleus.